Hello, everyone. Happy, happy afternoon. Happy Friday. We are so excited that you are joining us today. Um, we are back for our second webinar today. And we're just going to give it another moment for people to join us. So we'll give it one more minute and then we'll officially get started. And in the meantime, Teresa and I will just, you know, entertain you with song and dance. <laughs> <laughs> Good show tunes. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I pull out the accordion for a minute. Oh, where was the accordion? That's so close, yet so far away. <laughs> so we'll, we'll go ahead and formally get started just because I believe in. Um, <laughs> Somebody just said, somebody sent a, a special chat. Play Misty for me. I'm working oh. on Moon Rib. Maybe by next, you know, Friday when we do our next round of webinars, we'll have that ready for you, Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome everyone. For those of you who are able to join us live, we are so thrilled that you could be with us for our second webinar. Um, I'm so excited about this topic because this isn't a field that we get to play in. Um, normally, normally we're working with corporate clients, we're working with our teams and our organizations. And um, and I guess I just want to take a moment for those of you who are on the line, <laughs> I realize like, I just assume we're all friends. And I assume that I know everyone and that you know us, but I'll take a moment. My name is Sarah Nell Wilson, and I'm the president of Sarah Nell Wilson Incorporated. And we are a leadership coaching and consulting company. And we're really passionate about how do we help uh, leaders and people build, rebuild, and heal their teams and their relationships. So that's just a little bit about us. When we were talking about how can we help people right now, what information can we give, how can we come from a place of abundance, we started to realize that a lot of the challenges our clients were experiencing weren't necessarily related to work, but was related to home. And specifically for those of you with children, um, how do you navigate this new world? Because like, I mean, I always thought that work by balance was a, a myth anyway, but now it's like there's a collision between, between the two. And as we were talking about it, we realized that we have this resident expert on our team with uh, Dr. Teresa Peterson. And so we realized she has this incredible wealth of knowledge and experience. And, um, and we thought that it would just be a really valuable topic for us to explore to say, so what do we do? How do we survive having children at home? I'm personally really excited for you all to get to learn from Teresa. Um, she has incredible wisdom that is both pragmatic um, and practical and with a health, healthy dose of realism, right? Like this, uh, this is a no BS like type of content of like, let's just talk about the real struggles of this. Um, just so you know, um, we will do our best to answer whatever questions you have and follow up afterwards if there's anything that we don't have answered. So with that, I'm gonna go on mute and hide myself and Teresa, I'm turning it over to you. Take it away. Hello, good afternoon. Um, my phone tells me that it's Friday, so <laughs> so that's good. I'm not sure I would know if, uh, if my phone hadn't told me that. Just a couple um, pieces as we're getting started. Welcome, we're so glad you're here. We really want to be a support for you um, and we're all in this together. So um, we'll record and share. So if um, you get called away, we've got your back. Um, you can ask a question at any time. Um, just to keep my focus, I won't be looking at the questions all the time, but Sarah will be, and so um, she's going to help fill me in on those. Um, you have, um, it might say question or it might say chat. Um, we had a little hiccup with that with GoToWebinar on their end yesterday. So on your um, the right side of your screen, you'll have a chat or a question box, and those will all um, be sent to us. No one else can see what you write in there, and if you don't see it, um, just on that upper right of your screen, there's an orange arrow, and if you hit that, it should pop out, um, pop out that box for you. Um, if our connection gets a little sluggish, I'm going to turn my webcam off. Um, so you can, so take in as much of this messy bun as you want right now, right? That's uh, that's good. Um, if for some reason you lose your connection, you can come in using the link that you use to get in. Um, or like we said, we'll automatically send you everything um, after, 
sector. So Sarah did a really good job of um, talking about her and the team and our other colleague who's amazing, Rachel, is on the call with us. She's not in the picture because she uh, lives in another state. So you can just imagine um, the most beautiful face you've ever seen just sitting on the couch right next to us. That's me on the end. Um, I'm Teresa Peterson. I've worked um, in the field of education for about 20 years. Um, I have three kids of my own, as you can see. I have a third grader, a second grader, and a kindergartner. I've taught everything from fifth grade to college students and everything in between. Um, and I regularly sub and volunteer in elementary school. So um, I feel like I've got a good taste of things um, to be able to show you and um, hopefully lighten your load a little bit because uh, I've certainly got the message from lots of my friends and people in my network that right now has been tough. So we wanna give you a moment here. Um, I should say that when I was working on a draft uh, the other day, I thought, let's have, let's start by like people sharing, um, you know, something they're doing to take care of themselves right now. Like share with us a self-care tip. And two of my closest friends said, um, don't ask me about self-care. There is none. Not that was heavy to hear. And my um, other good friend said, self-care was the first thing to go. So um, so help us, you know, get a sense of where you're coming from. So share in the chat box or the question box, what is one word you would use to describe your life right now? So people are already coming up, hectic, Great. unbelievable. Life is very surreal now, chaotic, mm -hmm. all capitals overwhelming, mm. exhausting. It's a cluster, crazy, yeah. <laughs> eating too many snacks. I hear you, Crystal Bloom. Yeah, yeah. Um, questionable. A calmer chaos, I think is a really interesting mm. though. Somebody said they're appreciative though. It's messy, it's questionable. Um, disliking this new normal, um, struggling because mm. the pantry is empty which could be physical. I think that's also a really good metaf metaphor as well. Yeah. But if your pantry is empty and we can help you, let us know. Um, Please just, do. Yeah. Just can't do it all, disorganized. Um, eight years cancer free. So at the oh. moment of celebration, which I think speaks to how, Teresa, we've talked about how life still goes on, right? They're still happy. Um, guilt for being happy to be with my family during this time. Oh boy, that's so, a heavy one. Yeah, unsettling, uncertain, unreal. Those are just some of the comments that are coming in right now. Thank you. Um, those are big words. You know, that's a lot to think about. Um, and just um, uh, when you registered, we asked questions about how old are your kids um, and what do you need to know, right? And um, so we wanted to be transparent that the age range that came in was um, people have kids who are about eight months old is about the youngest we saw when we looked um, at the data most recently. And then there were people concerned about their adult children, some of them who were still living at home. Um, one that really touched our team. And so if, if this mom is out here, um, the, the mom who has the daughter who's a senior in college, whose all her coursework was abruptly moved online. You know, there's no senior celebration. There's no commencement. Um, the job market is now very uncertain. That one, that one really resonated with our team. <clears throat> so I just wanted to honor, honor that one. And you know, this is my goal is to share things that will help with people of any age, knowing that some will work better for younger children and some for um, older children, adolescents, um, even the young adults in your house. But there's no one size fits all. So um, I just want you to to know going in that you can listen through the filter of your child, your home, your situation, um, and, and take what works best for you. So our roadmap as we move forward, um, I wanna share some of your questions and concerns, some big picture ideas that I'm hoping will set your mind at ease a bit, some really practical tips for establishing routines and just kind of, um, you know, if we were at work right now, we would say like, we need to norm, right? Like we need to get our structures in place. We need to find norms. And essentially you have to do that at home now too. And then some resources um, that you can use for now and for later. Um, and I'm really working to strike a balance between giving you 
um, enough information that will help calm you without overwhelming you and still giving you a chance to connect um, and knowing that your time is valuable and there are a lot of demands on it. So, um, so that's, that's our frame of reference. Um, I know there's a lot of information on this slide. Um, the delay in go to webinar makes it a little tricky to fade things in, but I wanna take a minute to go through these points. Um, first of all, right, I am not a perfect parent. I don't know anyone who is, and I'm not into perfection anyway. Um, so please know that I'm coming from a place of humble support, right? Parenting is a tough gig on the best day, and these are not the best days for any of us. Um, so I just want you to know um, where I'm coming from with that. Um, and like I said, every child is different. If you have more than one child, you know every child in the same family is different. Um, so just listen for what will work with you and don't be afraid to try some new things too. <clears throat> um, one of the pillars that I want you to really anchor onto right now is that you are your child's first teacher right? Think of all the things you taught this child or are currently teaching this child. Um, those skills didn't evaporate, right, when you sent them to school or to daycare. Um, you will always be immensely influential. Um, the love, the bond you have, even now when it's strained, is immeasurable. So um, you are your child's first teacher, and you have a lot more that you can teach. Uh, there are no learning emergencies. Um, this one, I was thinking about um, out of the blue. So many people I knew were like, oh my God, I have to start homeschooling. You know, I've got to set up a classroom now in the dining room. And I stepped back from it because I thought, well, I'm not sure anyone's really asked any of us to do that. I think our urgency to create like a school in our home probably speaks to the routine we're used to, right, as society, but I think also to the importance that school plays, right, in our culture, in our young people's lives. Um, but there are no learning emergencies. And I read some posts where moms, um, now I'm saying moms, and I know it's moms and dads. I just mostly read posts from moms because that's who I associate with the most, right? So, so dads, I'm not excluding you. Um, I just, um, I'll probably say moms by default and I'll do my best to catch that. Um, so one of the things I want you to know is for years we heard about research on summer slide, right? That time during the summer where your child, poof, loses all these skills that they had, right? But the research on that isn't holding up quite like we expected it to. Um, kids don't lose nearly as much. Um, and if you use the time well, right, maybe some camps and interspersed, whatever, they can retain almost all of their skills. So if you're thinking, I've got to start this right away so we don't lose skills, that's probably not a big concern. Um, now, do we want kids, you know, twiddling their thumbs or gaming all day or whatever? We'll know. But um, that goes down to um, it's okay to not have all the answers, right? None of us do. And one of the things that will really be helpful right now with your child is just modeling curiosity. Let's find out. Um, maybe your trip to Chicago got canceled and you were looking forward to the Field Museum together. Maybe you can do that virtual trip now until you can get there later. Um, kids, especially older ones, will really respect you if you're upfront about not knowing um, and not pretending to know. Um, let go of your fear. Um, I've heard a lot of like, now what am I supposed to do? Um, I don't know how to be a teacher, and that kind of thing. Um, what am I supposed to do with these guys all day? Which, which I've said that too. So again, I'm not coming from a place of knowing everything, right? Um, but your fear of your child falling behind, um, all the kids are in the same boat right now. Teachers are professionals. They will um, work with your child wherever he or she is when they come back. And any time you're articulating that fear, particularly out loud, your child's gonna pick up on it and it might feed their anxiety too. And I don't know about anybody else, but more anxiety in my house is not what uh, I'm really looking for <laughs> right now. Um, and on behalf of our whole team, we just want to, you to know 
and we feel very strongly, it's okay to just survive this, right? This is not a time that you need to worry about knocking it out of the park, um, you know, or making some incredible thing. Maybe you will, right? But like, it's okay to hunker down and take care of business and just do the best you can. Um, and like I said, there are no perfect parents. So we asked you um, what you wanted from us and the big ideas that emerged were keeping kids engaged, whether that's like author gadgets, learning, entertained, busy, happy. Um, another huge one, right? How to manage your kids during your active work time. We had a message from one parent whose employer was still expecting her to be online, like visible in meetings about 90% of the day. So I guess a shout out too, that if you are a leader and we had a few who are tuning in to their teams, really think about what needs to happen on what time frame. Um, it feels really stressful to me to think about having to be online 90% of the workday while I also have kids at home. And then another um, one that I heard or we saw over and over was helping kids cope. Um, that, you know, I thought that word cope was so beautiful and, and also really difficult because you're looking for information to help your child cope while you're also coping, right? And, and coping during a physical separation from other people who would probably be very supportive usually, right? Or those, those structures that would be very supportive. Um, you know, daycare, for example, or just, um, you know, a, a friendly neighbor who will watch your kids in the yard for a few minutes so you can go inside and do something. And now you might be very isolated from that. Um, I want to, as we transition to some other big ideas, um, this is this is back to like Psych 101, maybe. And, and you might think, why is this crazy lady bringing this in now? But this is one of the big ideas um, when we're thinking about um, learning, because a lot of you were really concerned about learning, keeping them engaged, keeping them going. And this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And, and what I want you to think about is at the bottom, we've got food, water, shelter, right? The, the basic human needs, safety. Those are in jeopardy right now, right? For a lot of people. Um, learning isn't really going to be accessible if you're if you're down in those layers right now and and by the way there is nothing wrong with being down at the base level of this hierarchy um you know it's a pandemic for goodness sakes um the, the comment that the pantry was about empty right which we said could mean mentally right like i don't have any more to give and, and maybe i'm food insecure now and and i want to copy what sarah said if you are please reach out because our team will will support you. Um, then take a look in the middle, love and belonging. Um, if we don't feel loved, if we don't feel connected, um, learning isn't really going to happen for us. Teachers see this all the time when kids come to school hungry. Um, I'm thinking of a young man I worked with, he was a fifth grader and he fell asleep in the middle of the day because the police had been at the neighbor's house all night and it was a big, big to do. So he, he didn't feel safe. He hadn't rested. Um, and that love and belonging piece um, is so important regardless of our age. If, if those bottom three aren't in place, learning is going to be very superficial. In fact, we might not even call it learning. We might just like participating in a learning exercise, right? And the same goes for our work. If we're hovering and managing these bottom three, um, levels, um, our work isn't going to be its best, right? We don't even have time to think about feeling good about ourselves and what we can do if these other things aren't in place. Um, and I'm, I'm sure we can all think of times, maybe you went through a divorce or a miscarriage or you're losing a parent. When, when something in the bottom of that pyramid is knocked out of place, life is um, difficult and uncomfortable and our brain can't um, can't get to where it needs to go. So I'm sharing that because you and one of your children, multiple children, might be just operating on that base level of the pyramid. And if that's where you're at, I want to give you full permission to just tend to the bottom, 
the bottom of the pyramid, the foundational levels. You don't need to worry about, you know, I don't know, writing some literary analysis if, if you're down here. Um, I just wanted to share that with you because I think it's so critically important. Um, and, and teachers and schools know this. So um, I, I have no doubt that they are fully thinking about um, this, where they're going to start sending us more things to do, and we'll talk about that later. One of the best things you can focus on right now um, is helping your child feel safe. And Sarah does a lot of work on psychological safety with clients and how to build that in teams. And I wanted to mirror that um, with your young people, right? Right now, I mean, all the time, right? But right now in particular, when the world might turn, feel very upside down, um, your children, and I'm saying children, but these might be your grandchildren, your nieces, um, the neighbor girls who you like, any child in your life. Um, and, and by child, I'm just saying birth to, you know, I'm someone's child, right? And I'm 42. So, so these are good takeaways for anyone in a parenting, grandparenting role, right? We want young people to know they can be themselves and they can be themselves all the time, but especially right now that it's okay if they're making mistakes, that they can ask for help. We want them to know they're loved. Um, we know, uh, you know, sometimes it can be hard, maybe not to love them, but like hard to show them love when they're um, literally dancing on our last nerve, right? Like, <laughs> I, I can't see anybody now, so I can't say like, raise your hand, or I can't, uh, read your nonverbals, but I'm guessing we've all been there. Maybe today, maybe you've already been there at least once or once already. Um, we want kids to know that there's differences. So are okay. yeah. Sorry to yeah. interrupt. No, a bunch please. of people, they, they can raise their hands. And so people are oh, doing the, the verbal yeah. hand raising. Oh, thank you. Is multiple, oh. multiple times a day. Um, yes. <laughs> Those are my people. Yes. Good. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Chime in anytime, Sarah. I love that so much. Um, we want, and, and, and here we're going to move into things, too, that, um, that are going to help us think more about learning here in a minute. I feel safe to take risks. Um, I can talk about difficult topics. I mean, right now feels like one very difficult topic. Um, my contributions are valued. And this is, you know, we'll come back to some of these later. My needs are respected. This is a big one. Um, that, that we see a lot because kids report being under more anxiety, more stress, more pressure than ever before. We think about media, social media, um, competition, things like year round sports, right? Academic um, pressures. I don't have to win or be right every time to be loved. That's a big takeaway from young people. Um, I, I worked with a woman when I was pregnant with my second son. I worked with a woman. She was a school counselor. And um, she said something like, so what are you hoping for? I'm like, you know, just a, just like a healthy average baby. And she kind of smirked because she'd worked with a lot of parents, right? And she said, everybody just wants an average kid until they have one. And then they want, you know, the genius kid, the, you know, the Babe Ruth of kids the, um, you know, whatever, pick any, pick any, you know, excellent person. So I think that's a caution for all of us, especially right now, um, that we just want our kids to know they can show up as themselves. So I want to pause here for a minute and really give you a chance to connect. And I'm going to turn it over to share, Sarah, excuse me, to share some responses. So, you know, what's resonated with you so far? Is there anything you've heard that's put you at ease or challenged you. We'll take a minute and just hear from you and then we'll move forward. Um, uh, somebody shared just feeling less alone. Coping is essential. Thank you for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That we're not alone in balancing continued work and parenting mm. at the time. Yeah. In fact, it's probably the new norm. I mean, yeah. a huge percentage of people are doing this. Yeah, good. A number of people are talking about understanding the research that kids don't lose the skills as quickly as yes. we think. 
Yes, good. I'm, I was hoping that would um, put some minds at ease. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a couple of these because I want I want to get through all because there's some really good yeah. ones. I'm just the Maslow hierarchy was a good reflection and reminder, mm -hmm. giving myself some grace. Um, just that I you know I think maybe this is a question to explore of like how do you not transmit the fear when you have real life fear for a pl yeah. plethora of reasons. Oh yeah. Just all of this relieves a lot of pressure right now. So thank you okay. that it's okay just to survive this. Yes. That I don't have to be a superstar or home no. mom. Sure. Right. Yes. That, yes. that self-care is still important. Triple exclamation point. Yeah. Um, that it's okay to make mistakes and on mm -hmm. uh, and be on that last level of that psychological safety. Oh, um, good. The importance of need to be loved and to feel connected. Mm. Um, just the reminder of giving self grace and giving the kids grace. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, this is one I can resonate with this one. Been so busy checking in on everyone else. Didn't mm -hmm. realize my own feelings. I kind of feel like I need uh -huh. to pop one for myself. Yeah. Boy, that's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the stamina, right? Of just oh, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. The stamina. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this is a really good one. I mean, there's a lot of people like we don't need to cl create the classroom. We can be right. okay to make mistakes um, that we're in this together. But this one, um, where did it go? Oh yeah, that sometimes mom doesn't have to have the answers and it's okay. Yes, yeah. It's so, if it's okay, like what came up for me when you were talking about that is, I mean, we yeah. know that from a leadership perspective, that's one mm -hmm. of the quickest ways to build trust is to say, you know, I don't know, but we'll figure it out yeah and as parents you can be confident with what you know and also confident with what you don't know like i right. this is new for us too so let's figure it out together absolutely um, so those are just some of the things that are coming in and i'll turn it back over to you Teresa. thanks um so I, let's let's transition here to our next se section and i think this will resonate with people too because um you know someone was saying like we don't have to recreate the classroom and I want to give you a couple big ideas, right? We've got learning versus schooling. Um, and when we think about school, it's all the structures, right? It's, it's the physical space, it's the classroom, it's the teacher, it's all of those supports, the materials, right? And, and no one expects you to be a teacher, right? Like I'm, I'm a teacher, I'm friends with a lot of teachers, I have friends at all levels in the education system, and no one expects you to be the teacher. Um, don't try to recreate a classroom in your home. You don't need to do that. Um, I'll give you some ideas of things that you can do, but uh, don't worry about that. Um, don't get hung up on Pinterest or Facebook. I had, um, uh, I was supervising a girl and her, a young woman and her practicum and her cooperating teacher said, um, Pinterest is the worst thing to happen to teachers because they think their room has to look so cute, right? And and I don't think that that's entirely true, right? But I think it was for this young woman. And so I just, I want you to know that some of the best learning, sorry, I bumped my, I bumped my folding table down here in the basement. So excuse me <laughs> if your screen rattles. Um, uh, things don't have to be um, picture perfect. They don't have to be adorable. Um, don't get hung up on what other people are posting they're doing. Um, learning is really messy, right? Um, learning is messy. Sarah and I talk a lot about one of the big principles in education is that understanding has to be earned, right, by the learner. And I always um, think about this in my mind as like the Matrix, you know, and Neo, and re remember that scene where he like has to learn to fly the helicopter and they just like plug in the directions and he sits up like I'm ready. Um, you know, real learning doesn't occur that way. So um, I, I don't know. I, I want you to think about ways you can help your kid practice, um, practice some different skills. So here are some tips. Um, one of them that resonated um, with some of my friends is that if you want to continue focusing on, you know, basic math skills, reading skills, that kind of thing, um, 
you can meet your child where she is with her learning. So for example, yesterday, I was working with um, my kids on math. I set the timer for 15 minutes. That's all the time we had and probably all the time we needed, right? When, when a lot of us were growing up, ugh, who else had a teacher who would assign like 60 problems, you know, and you 60 problems odd, you know, something, something, and you just, it was too much. Right, forget about stuff like that. Um, it, you know, maybe you choose five problems um, at your child's level. Maybe the teacher provides them. Maybe, maybe you make them up. Um, I guess I feel in a good position to do that because we just had parent-teacher conferences before break, and I have the packet of like ideas that they gave me. Um, but maybe you just go for like five in a row, right? Like that's that would be good. Another thing I want you to think about is. Um, you know, your child might say, we always do math for an hour, you know, in, in Mrs. Fromm's class, the math block is one hour. Well, right, she has to give whole group instruction, she has to divide people out, she probably pulls groups of similar skills for mini lessons while kids work around the room. We're not doing that right now, right? I saw a beautiful post from someone that was like, this is just crisis school, right? We're just doing what we can do. Um, your child might be comforted by elements of keeping the routine like my oldest son enjoys working on his academics every day that's comforting to him um, my middle son does not and so um, for him it's like every other day for 15 minutes we'll do some math flashcards you don't have to you know develop something fancy um, and another thing i wanted to remind us because it's so easy to forget um, is that when we think about the attention span of young people, the norm, the typical child um, is two to five years, I mean, sorry, two to five minutes of focus times their age. So to put it in perspective, if you have a one-year-old, it would be very typical for that child to only be able to focus two minutes, right? That gives you a whole new perspective on your day. Right, and maybe a perspective to share with your team. Like my child can focus for two minutes at a time. So we have a lot of transitions, but we'll get to that later too. Um, everything I've read and what I fully support is, um, you know, the general two hour limit on screen time is a little bit out the window right now. So what I want to encourage you to think about is more curated screen time. Um, gosh, if you've got a little one at home, PBS might be your new best friend. And if it was on all day, as far as I'm concerned, that's probably just fine, right? Maybe you like National Geographic. Um, one thing my kids love, remember, I have a nine-year-old boy, an eight-year-old boy, and a six-year-old girl, and they love watching Bob Ross paint. I have no idea. It, it's hypnotic almost to them. They love it. Um, so you know what, Bob Ross? You know, you, you come on the screen and you do that, right? We'll, we'll stream that. Um, I'm anticipating we'll all start hearing more from school. You know, lots of them were on break. They don't have the infrastructure for learning at home. They're figuring out a lot of things too. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing we'll start getting some more resources and we'll share with you. Um, I was working on compiling a list and then our school district emailed an amazing list. So we're just gonna give you the link to that. Um, and, I, and I think that will work for you. One thing, and I did, um, if you haven't used Khan Academy before, it's free. Your kids will really enjoy it. Um, there's a, the young version is more preschool and younger. Um, the regular version can work with um, kindergarten on up. Um, there are videos geared more toward high school, like on biology or different topics. My kids love watching those anyway. Um, there's nothing inappropriate in them, right? They're just um, written at a different level. Um, let's see, there's so much I could share and I, I'm trying to be so conscientious of time. I want to give you some quick tips. One thing you can really do to make your life easier and maybe happier is just ask your child, what do you want to learn? You know, and in some ways, as difficult as this is, we've been given this gift of time. So what do you want to learn and what do you need from me? We did this at my house the other day. I'm gonna read off of my list for you. My daughter wanted to learn how to throw bugs in the trash. Okay. I, I had no idea she that she was thinking about that or she wanted to do that. Um, my other son said, finally learned to fold socks. 
they wanted to learn cooking. Um, I've heard from a friend they wanted to try gardening. Now your challenge is really trying not to say. We've already done that. I already showed you that. I already, right? Like we're all wearing thin, but also if they generate something that you've been hoping they would learn soon, now you've got the buy-in, right? Like, and when you think about um, an older child, maybe starting around fourth grade, sixth grade, whenever your child's getting more self-awareness, right? And, and this continues up, up, you know, for quite a ways into um, young adulthood, but um, what do you want to learn or try now that no one is watching, right? Like there's no one around to judge there. You don't have to fear anyone seeing or laughing or whatever your child might be concerned about. Like, what do you want to learn now that no one's looking? Um, that self-awareness that makes them self-conscious about um, trying new things or you know, I don't want to look stupid or whatever words those help them acclimate to society right like we we want people to start thinking how am I being perceived by others how am I showing up um, but we know uh, at those ages it just gets in the way a lot too um, so give your child permission to try something and I couldn't resist this um, <laughs> this is a post from a woman I know and she is a master teacher she is absolutely incredible. And she has been posting um, just a series of like learning time fails at her house, just to give everyone like, I don't know, a good laugh, peace of mind. So, so yeah, so if you were thinking like, I don't know how to teach or what I'm supposed to do, this woman is masterful. Like if your child had her class, you'd probably throw a block party. Um, and and this, is, this is a moment from her house. So I'm, I'm hoping that, gives you a smile. Uh, we're gonna share a few more tips um, and then we're gonna give you an opportunity to chime in here. But Sarah, is there anything coming through that you wanna highlight before we move forward? Nope, not yet. Okay, great. Um, the biggest thing we heard from you is help, I need to work. Um, so we put together um, some tips to, to help that. Focus on how you're going to manage behavior when you're at home. We can't control other people. Um, control is a really harmful illusion. Um, control is related to fear, right? If I want to control someone else, I probably have to instill an element of fear in them. And when we think about that pyramid and we think about safety, I really want to avoid I mean, I probably never want other people to feel afraid <laughs> to interact with me, but I really don't want that now, right? Um, kids will find control in their lives if we don't help them cultivate a normal feeling of control or self-control. So just question two, um, what are the things that still need to be firm during the day? And what are things you can shift or relax a little? Um, that doesn't mean anything goes, and we'll come back to that later. Um, some other tips for you. Um, we heard from a lot of people who were thinking about like, how do I keep my kids happy? How do I entertain them? And my loving response is don't, right? You're the mom or dad um, or whatever your role is in relationship to the child. You're not the cruise director. You don't have to entertain them and rethink, um, rethink boredom. Like there's a huge amount of research about the beauty of downtime and the effects of downtime on our brain. Um, and on our team, we call it leaving space for the remarkable. So um, let your child have that distance. Let them feel bored if that's what they want to call it, because out of that will come something. Um, it, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, resist jumping in, resist trying to fix it. Um, I will say, think about where a safe space for your child to get messy is. You know, is that, do you have a room downstairs where they could build the fort and run around? Um, you know, I usually cut it off before it's like full Lord of the Flies style, you know, but that's just, that's just where my line is. Um, I want you to feel really good focusing on skills, things that will make your life easier now, and after life gets back to, I just put some normalcy because none of us really know um, what that will look like. Um, I smile because in our house, someone wants to learn something new always when we're five minutes late to get somewhere and then I'm annoyed, right? Like I, I have no doubt you've, you've been there too. So 
you know, knowing that we're inside or we're on our property or whatever, um, or that we have outside space still that we can access, whether that's private space or community space. Um, you wanna ride without training wheels, you wanna tie your shoes, um, you wanna learn to pour drinks. Um, I think about our teenagers too right now. So many of them don't have the skills, like basic skills, laundry, cooking. Um, those are so important. I've worked with a lot of college freshmen who don't have those basic skills. And the minute they get away from home, I had a young woman once, Ellie, and she said, my mom took such good care of me, like such good care of me. And I love that. But now I can't do anything. <laughs> so she, she, um, that was a, that was a painful adjustment for her. So this would be a great time. And another layer of that that I think is great is helping your child think about life after this, because this will end and we will move forward. So um, help them think about what they can do now while we're like hibernating a little bit to come out, um, to come out ahead. And, and just being mindful of our words, um, you know, if we're saying something like, I have shown you this a hundred times, right? Not helpful. Um, you know, think it, of course you're gonna think it. It's just the saying it part that I want you to, I remember, we're not perfect. We're still probably thinking it. We're just not saying it. I want you to be really cautious right now um, about isolation. Um, encourage your child to connect digitally. Um, connections with friends, extremely important. Um, connections across generations. Young people who have um, aunts, grandparents, um, uncles, um, cool older neighbors, whatever in their lives um, have a, a much better mental health and development than young people who are only interacting with their peers and their parents age folks, right? So um, so look for those multi-generational connections. Um, those could really be fostered right now. Um, go ahead. Yeah, Sarah? I was just going to say that Katrina just said that her son and her best friend are sending postcards to each other, which is also their letter writing skills. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I'll share that uh, my, my two nieces on my husband's side, they're starting to do guest lecture series with the grandparents. And so it's oh. like videos and the grandparents are talking about different topics, right, to help them develop the skills and stay connected. So. I love that. Um, here are a couple more for you, right? Build resilience. Um, when we talk about resilience, um, that's like the defining thing, right? Um, most people, um, you know, all of their factors being similar, right? Similar intelligence, similar social skills, whatever. Resilience makes the difference. And there are countless books about this. Um, one book that I will share, so if you, um, I, I know you don't have time, <laughs> but if you want an escape or you want to plan something for later, our PTO read a book called The Gift of Failure um, by Jessica Leahy, and we devoured that book. It was amazing, and a lot of it's about building resilience and modeling this yourself for your child, especially right now. Um, this is one of the best learning experiences. I mean, as painful as it is for all of us, this is a very... Um, powerful point in time that we're at. Um, share your schedule, you know, be proactive in planning the day. We've started having um, a pep talk the night before and, and just like 60 seconds or less, you know, don't, okay, family meeting, everyone sit down, doesn't have to be that. Um, sometimes I liked it. Now, don't tell them I said this. They can probably hear you, but sometimes I like to do these pep talks. I kick it off while they're eating their snack and their mouths are full. You know, is it smart? Is it um, is it is it crafty? I don't know, but but that helps in our house. If you have a child that um, needs to hear information more than once, um, write it down for them. My middle son in particular has a hard time just getting something verbally and locking into it. Um, so if there are things I really need from him, like I'm on a call from one to two, um, I just need to write it down for him, and then he's much more likely to comply. I want you to really think about changes you can make in your routine. Um, 
Sarah knows this because we had to practice it while I was on a call with her a few times, but um, my kids and I practiced, and this is for younger ones, but, right? But the expectation that once I put my headphones on, you need to have your whisper on, right? And we'd practice it when I wasn't on a call. So like the headphones are off and you can be as loud as you want. And now I'm putting them on and like whisper. You, and, and teachers do this in class, like the first couple weeks, they're just practicing these routines. Um, you, maybe you wanna put like a little stop sign up when you can't be disturbed or a post-it that says, you know, stop. Um, use a timer. My house, if, if our microwave timer didn't work, I, we would probably never get anything accomplished. Um, I might set a timer for, I'm gonna work for 15 minutes and then I'm gonna come sit with you. Um, maybe you want to use the timer 15 minute warning right before a meeting or a call starts you know 15 minute warning the timer's on do you need help in the bathroom do you need a snack do you need a drink are you starting a show do you you know like i'm not opening any packages i'm not opening any goldfish um and again you'll have to practice those things um and you know likewise little things like putting um you know, putting clean glasses on the counter if your child can't reach them inside or putting the straw in the juice box before. Just like some of those tiny things make for really big, um, really big changes, big wins. That was a lot. And I know that. And, <laughs> and we're still not quite done, but let's take a let's take a moment before we get to kind of our last section here. Um, so I just want to pause and I want to let Sarah share out, but please let us know, like, is there a tip or a big idea that's that's helping you, that's pushing you, um, that's, that's maybe helping you think about some harmony? We'd love to hear from you. Um, Jennifer shared having the kids select the menu for the week and then assemble the grocery list since we're limited on Love. when we can now. Love. Uh, asking, uh, Jen said, asking um, her daughter what she wants to learn. Mm -hmm. Uh, Amy shared that currently I'm setting the schedule, having the kids help set the routine will be awesome. You know, and this is, this is just human nature. People are more likely to commit to that which they create, right? So the more you can involve the kids, the better. Um, Sarah shared, we use a basket and the kids have their cup and their snack Ooh. all day in there that they pick out. Um, Susie Perfect. shared that, um, I'm thinking that my eight-year-old could call aunts, uncles, and grandparents for a story and then have having him write the story out. Love that. Oh, yeah. Um, Jennifer shared having loud music on when doing evening dishes and kids get to pick the tunes. I love that. <laughs> um, uh, Alicia shared uh, meditation and yoga together. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Katrina shared getting dressed every day, no pajamas. Hmm. Um, Jennifer shared a daily walk after lunch around the block, getting up at the same time every day and going to bed at the same time. That's helpful. I think I need these in my life. Like I don't have kids, but I think this routine would be good for me right now. So thank you for I feel like I should be paying you all for this advice. Um, Greta shared, um, we have one hour of exercise every day and the kids get mm -hmm. to choose what we do. I love that. Again, just that choice, like get them yeah. involved. Um, uh, some people are just saying like, ah, I clearly need a schedule. Um, YouTube music videos or dance parties. Jennifer oh, shared. Good. Yeah, I love that. Uh, Rachel shared letting my son pick out his books for daily reading. So instead mm, of absolutely him pick it out. These are some really great tips. Thank you. Yeah. That's probably it. If anything else comes Thanks. in, I'll share yeah. it later when we pause. Yeah, great. Um, we've got a few more to share. Um, we could talk for a long time, a time about leverage, right? And using praise. And a big idea that we want you to hold on to now is just avoid complicated systems of rewards and punishment. Um, your time is so um, is so limited, right? And it's and it's full of, you know, we were talking about this this morning, Sarah and I were, but. Um, 
we our lives used to be very full of like running places and getting stuff and taking three kids to different activities and now our lives are full of things that we didn't choose right and and those things that we enjoyed that were outlets like um like I finally got in the habit of, of Pilates, right? And like, I finally established the habit and now I can't go there, right? And and so we're, our lives are full of, of, maybe it feels like freedom with restrictions and um, it's a very different feeling than it was when we were just plain busy. Um, so I, I don't, I want to encourage you like not to spend a bunch of time managing a system with stickers or cotton balls or money. Um, give your kids very specific praise that is meaningful. You know, when you unloaded the dishwasher, when my meeting went late, that was huge for me. Thank you so much, right? Be specific because whatever you're specific about um, will get repeated, right? And then likewise with their learning, like I know math is not your favorite and you persevered through all five of those problems Ooh, like you want to go ride your bike now let's go out for 10 minutes whatever um and thinking about what your leverage is you know and, and leverage can be um very positive like um you know think about things that your your kids your young people like to do around the house and like well, I would say out of the house normally, but now we're only in the house. So it's it's a little harder to find leverage. But one of the things we use a lot is, um, it's, it's a big deal in our house if you get to pick the show we watch first. That's something everybody's really excited about. So, um, so being able to say like, if you don't get this finished, right? Like you're not gonna be in the running for choosing the show. And it's not quite a punishment, right? It's not like go to your room or whatever um, but that's some leverage that we use and every kid has different leverage and, and it's a little more challenging now that people can't do as many things um <laughs> oh whack-a-mole you know we have all these like classic hollywood you know like the old west sheriff and like justice is swift and like you know there was a problem and like boom you know this very industrial mindset of of humans um but you don't have to address every problem that comes up right away. Maybe you're too angry. And I have certainly said to my own kids, like, I am too angry to talk to you right now. We're gonna have to come back to this. Um, and it's okay to say, that wasn't okay. Um, we're gonna come back to that in a little while. Um, one of the times I find is most effective with my kids is when they're sleepy. Um, I like to talk about things that happened um, how to regroup, right, to move forward um, when they're getting ready for bed, or at least whenever they're not escalated, right? So, so not only is it that you don't have to take the, your time to address it right away when it's happening, if your child is escalated in that moment, your message won't be received anyway. So give it, give it some space. Um, if you have a child who's a good reader, writer, so, you know, maybe second, third grade on up, consider writing them a letter. Um, that's a strategy that you can use. You can, you could text them, right? Um, but you can write a letter. Some families use notebooks, right? Where the kid and the, uh, the teenager, right? And the parent write back and forth. This could be a good system to set up now. Um, even just for encouragement or for things um, that you want to share with them, but that you can keep going um, when we come out on the other side of this. And one of the sentence starters that I think most people can relate to is I love you and. Remember, we talked about the hierarchy, we talked about you know people feeling uncertain, there's fear. Um, and so really validating for your child, I love you and I love you and I'm really frustrated because it was too loud today when I was trying to X. I love you and I'm concerned that if you stop doing any schoolwork, going back to school is gonna be really hard, right? Can we talk about that? Um, it's really helpful for us to model the duality of human emotions for kids. That's something that um, that we don't, you know, we just as a society, right, that I can have multiple feelings simultaneously for the same person. Um, so making sure our kids know we love them and. Uh, we do a lot of work with this with 
teens um, being emotionally supportive, um, which is the opposite of being dismissive. Um, and right now it's kind of tricky because even phrases like look on the bright side might feel dismissive to a child who's grieving um, because prom is canceled, right? Like they might not be able to see a bright side right now. Um, some of them that that I can recall hearing, here's a here's a list of some from a from some clients, right? I'll just I'll just let that sit for a minute, but just even the power of, I hear you, mm -hmm. allowing feelings, right? Not giving an immediate no, not one-upping, right? Like, it's not going to feel good. If your child's opening up and saying like, I'm really upset that there's not going to be a prom, then saying, well, I'm really upset because my girls weekend in Vegas got canceled. You know, like that doesn't, your child wasn't looking to you for that. And I think we all have, like everyone has a relative who does that. You know, it's always one more, it's the bigger fish, whatever. Um, we talk about this too with leaders and this is um, just listen for the loss. Your child's probably missing friends, their teacher, um, their routine, right? Um, they're missing their music program, the technology fair, prom, commencement. Um, these things feel like they ended very abruptly, right? There wasn't a lot of warning. Most of us went to spring break and we haven't been back since and we weren't mentally ready for that, right? Like uh, several kids have said, well, I think the hard part was I didn't really say goodbye to anybody, you know, and that's, that's tough. Um, we just have a couple more here to, to push our own thinking and your thinking a bit here, but um, it's hard right now to focus on gratitude for a lot of us. Um, but if you can model this for your kids and focus on what's going well, or something you have gratitude for that happened in the past, maybe that you're hopeful will happen again, um, and things that are in your power. Um, when people feel powerless, um, you know, that's a, that's a destructive place, right? From mental health or interpersonal relationships, um, so one of the things that I was telling my kids was, you know, um, we, we were talking about, I'm missing dot, 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 what are you missing? It's just a way to open it up. Um, so I said, I'm missing meeting my friend Bridget for breakfast on Saturday. Um, that's really special to me. That's a really important time. Um, and, and then I stopped and then I thought, well, I think, I think I'm missing it because I'm grateful that I have such a good friend. And Bridget, if you're watching still, uh, thanks for being such a good friend for 20 plus years. So then I thought, well, where's my power? And I thought, well, I could FaceTime with her, right? Like we could just get toast and FaceTime in the corner from our respective houses. So Bridget, if you're still out there and you wanna make some toast and FaceTime in the corner, or Darcy, if you're out there now still and you want to, uh, FaceTime while we hide under blankets from our families, I would definitely be open for that as well. Um, be really cautious about, don't judge what they're missing or what they're not missing. You know, I was texting with some friends and um, I said, I was high school was so miserable for me that I don't know that I would have missed prom or commencement because I it was a painful time in my life. Right, and, and your child might be feeling that way. They might not, school might not be their happy place. They might not be missing it. Just let them say that, right? This isn't a time to be like, well, school is, you know, we're just getting through right now. Um, and then our last couple thoughts, um, it's okay to take a hard line, right? Like so we still have to have healthy boundaries. Um, but, and notice there aren't very many hard lines we're gonna take, but all emo emotions are okay. We want kids to know it's normal to have a full range of emotions. That part is fine. All actions are not okay. Um, you know, we're, we're not gonna start hitting people. We're not cussing. Um, we're gonna be really careful about our coping. Um, this one concerns me a little, um, when I think about some memes and stuff I've been seeing about um, moms who are drinking a lot, 
um, be really careful with your own actions too. And I say that with love because we all need to cope, but we don't want to cope in ways that are making things uh, more difficult for us in the short term or the long term. Just a just a PSA from someone who cares, right? Uh, number two, boy, um, no, you can't meet your friends in person. I love you and stop asking me. <laughs> um, help your child know why you're saying no, right? I'm telling you, you can't meet your friends in person um, because I wanna say yes to supporting our healthcare community because I wanna say yes um, to keeping Grammy healthy because I wanna say yes to supporting our neighbor who just had a kidney transplant, right? Like help them understand that this isn't just mom saying, no, you're not doing it. And also lovingly that you don't care that other people's parents are allowing it um, because it's not the right thing. And, and then the last one, everyone contributes. There was a really great article. I mean, numerous articles, but one that came to mind when we were prepping for this was from NPR. Um, and young people who contributed to their household, to their community, you know, whether that was school or just their physical community, had much better mental health, had better confidence, um, and had fostered a lot more life skills. So I just want to invite you to make a hard line that everyone contributes in your house. Um, we're just getting ready to close. And um, I know this has been a lot of information. And like I said in the beginning, we wanted to balance giving you a lot of ideas, helping you feel connected, helping you interact on some level and take what is a huge topic and also a topic that didn't really exist about a week and a half ago, right? Like how do I work while i am got my kids at home overnight, right? Um, so I hope we've given you some things um, to help you, help you relax, help you think about how um, you might view things differently, how you might empower your children more. Um, and so I've used this question a lot in uh, learning with my college students, but it works with any age. And it's so important to just model that your thinking can and should change as a result of your experiences, right? And that's how we grow. So, um, so feel free to use this prompt. But I, I want to invite you to share now and we'll turn it over to Sarah. Um, I used to think, but now I think. I used to think, but now I think. We'll just give them give them a minute. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. You know, while while we're waiting, you know, for people's reflections to come in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe even a, a simpler way of thinking it. Oh, here we go. There they go. All right. So Amy shares, I used to think I could be an educational teacher, but now I think I'm a better, <laughs> I'm a better mother. And I need to remind myself that that is still a form of teaching. Oh, oh, gosh. That's <laughs> okay. That, I'm going to have a tear about that one. Oh, like that, that one gave me a little mist and yeah, I'm not a big crier, but I've got a little mist. Thank Amy. Yes. Yes. Right. Dan Danielle says, I used to think I needed to plan every hour, very scheduled. Mm. But now I think some flexibility and input from my kids will make things more enjoyable for everyone. Oh, yes. Yes, Kat Danielle. Kat Katrina says, I used to think I wanted to stay in my house forever. <laughs> I hear and that. Now, and now I think I will go insane <laughs> if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, I hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer shared, I used to think FaceTime for my teenagers were all bad. Teenager was bad. But now I think this is a great way for her to cope with missing all of her senior year milestones. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. Uh, Greg shared, I used to think sacrificing self-care for giving all to work and kids was good, but Ooh. now I know that not taking time for self-care robs, robs from my work and my kids. Oh yeah, great Love point. Uh, Amy, I used to think that, um, I used to think the emotional experience was all on me. Mm. Oh. And now I think modeling and allowing choice will make us stronger. Mm. 
It will. Uh, yes. Yes. I want to, I know we're, I know we're a little over mm -hmm. time, but somebody did ask a question that yeah. I um, uh, want to share. And just so you know, I know that you probably have to bounce off, but feel free to, to drop us a message. But um, the question was just like, how do we find harmony when, when you and your spouse might not agree oh. on how to navigate managing <laughs> the kids right now? I'm laughing because I'm like, does someone who knows me, did someone who knows me <laughs> question that's okay um full disclosure that's a big beef in our house right my husband who is a wonderful person his career involves machines right machines and people are really different um things that help us are facts right <laughs> um so if you can find and, and I'm not saying this because I know you have a lot of time, but you're welcome to email me um, and I will send you some things that would be helpful. But one thing that works for us is finding common ground in articles or ideas um, that, that are not original to either one of us. And as you can imagine, you know, this rubs me the wrong way a lot of the time because this is my field, right? <laughs> like this is my field. And other people, you know, um, sometimes appreciate my ideas, but um, but he works in a different world, you know. And um, so we find comfort in um, third party articles or books that we can both read and process and focus on the facts. Um, I think if you have questions too specific to your child, um, reach out to the teacher. Sometimes if the teacher says, um, you know what, um, his academics are really strong. I would just focus on reading for fun, free play, blah. Now you've got, in essence, a prescription from the teacher, right? And um, now we're just following what the teacher says. So that's a really hard one. Um, and it, yeah, I mean, our oldest son is nine and a half almost, and that's been a rub for nine and a half years. Um, and it's it's certainly um, ongoing, right? And and also remembering that you're both, I'm assuming, right? You're both coming from a place of love, and you want things um, to go really well for your child. Um, but but maybe even sharing like some elements from the hierarchy of needs, you know, that we can't get. We're not building rockets in the garage right now. Probably, I mean, maybe you are. Knock yourself out. But there's certainly no judgment if you aren't. That's not the expectation. Yeah, one thing that I I would add to that, yeah, I mean, please. just a couple of yeah, a couple of quick thoughts is, I think it's interesting to to understand like if somebody so this specific example was I, they have high schoolers, the mm. you know the the husband wants to keep this them waking up at the same time that they oh. would during school, mm. and the mother's like I think we can give some some ground here, mm -hmm. and I think that like sometimes the solution we put forward is coming from a place of what we value or what yeah. we actually actually need for ourselves yeah and if you can understand where that's coming from either what where's that what's the fear behind it or what's the value mm -hmm. behind it then we might be able to create something different so if 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 in this situation maybe it's the you know like what maybe asking the question you know if we if we don't keep them on the same schedule what's a concern you have that maybe mm -hmm. i'm not thinking of and maybe it's like oh well, maybe they'll build a bad habit or whatever the case is mm -hmm. you might be able to create from that that spot and and this is you know this is a good time to listen to what makes sense to the other person right mm -hmm. this is a good time to practice that empathetic listening um, the other, the other metaphor that might be valuable, and this is the work we do when we work with relationships, is we have to realize that um, each of us lives in our own little island. Um, I have my island. Teresa has her island. My husband has, you know, like if Teresa and I are partnering, and and it's not about, you know, true collaboration is not about like, well, how do I get Teresa to my island, or how do I, how does she pull me over to hers? But it's how do we create an island together, right? So it's not an either or, it's an and. Right. And I think that sometimes our brains get a little addicted to being right. And so we just need to have that conversation and acknowledge like, hey, you think this is important. And I think this is important. Knowing that what can we create from both of these places can be a really powerful way to come from. So that's just yeah. just a couple of thoughts to share. 
I absolutely agree, Sarah. And and another thing too, like knowing the context about the high schooler and the sleeping, um, don't forget to include the child, right? The young person. Right. Like if if this young person has never had a problem transitioning off of summer into a school year, I'd probably give them a, the benefit of the doubt to adjust their schedule, right? That's one of those adult skills they can practice. Um, and then you can intervene if it's not working out. Um, and another thing that may be helpful, and you could discuss this with your child, because we're all wired a little differently, but generally speaking, circadian rhythms in teenagers are wired to stay up later um, and get up later. And that's a natural pattern. Um, and, and that always surfaces when they talk about what time is the right time for school to start. So I would, I would invite you to pull the young person in um, and, and have a good discussion about it. Perfect. All right. That's it. That's it from the, the yeah. chat. Well, we wanted to just thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, thanks for everything you're trying to do, right? For yourself, for your family, for your employer, for your kids, for your parents. Um, you know, the list goes on and on. And I <laughs> lovingly said, like, we could do this, well, at least for a little while. Um, we're going to um, power off here in just a minute, but we're going to leave the link here open so that if you have extra comments or questions, you can type them in. We don't want to cut anybody off. Um, please connect with us. You can follow Sarah on social media. Um, she has a great weekly newsletter that you might be interested in. Um, Sarah's got a lot of great information that supports teams and individuals. Um, and there's always a little tidbit for me in there every few times. So a little, a uh, little plug. No, I'm just teasing. Just a little um, Teresa time. Just, the, just a little, you know. just a little Teresa time. Yeah. And <laughs> just, growing. And growing. Yeah. I'm just teasing anyway. Um, <laughs> Oh, so we'll leave the comments on. Please connect with us. You will automatically receive a survey. It's super short. Um, we would love your feedback. Um, and if there are more things that you want information on about you know, young people finding balance, whatever it is, please let us know. We'd be happy to, um, to meet your needs in another way with another session or, or whatever would work for you. Um, Sarah, what else do you wanna say before we power off here. Uh, I, I just want to say thank you and just make sure you give yourself some grace. I mean, everyone is under stress, but I mean, I can tell you, I, we, my husband and I don't have kids, but we work with so many parents who do and parents, you are in a very different spot. And I just know that, that we see you, we hear you and we value the struggle you're going through and really want to do whatever we can to help you navigate this time. And so with that, just, you know, thank you for being so amazing. And while managing your own stuff, you're managing our future yeah. as well. We appreciate you. Stay well, everybody. All right. Bye.